Layer masks are like invisible sheets of paper that we can apply to any layer. The layer can be a smart object, as it is here. It can be a JPEG or any other file format. Once the mask is created, it will be automatically selected and we can see that by the frame around the mask as opposed to if we wanted to edit the image itself, we would need to return to that, click it to select it. And there you can see that also has a frame. So back to the mask. So by applying black, white or gray onto the mask, we can control the visibility of different parts of that layer and we can use any tool to do this. I'm gonna use a brush, but we're not confined to just that brush. Now you can see I've got a flow rate at the top of the screen of 80. I'm gonna drop that down to about 10% by touching the number one key. I'm able to do that with this little icon here checked. So by applying black, white, and gray onto this layer mask, we can make parts of this sky transparent. Now you could say that because I'm only spraying the black with a flow of 10%, I'm actually spraying a very light gray, which is giving us the effect we need. But all I need to do is switch to white, and now I'm going to change that flow rate back to 100% by touching the zero key, and now I can return my mask to its original state. Another option to use on the mask, one that I use quite a bit, is the gradient tool. From the options at the top of the screen, I'm going to select gradient. I'm going to select the basic gradients, and this is the one that I want, foreground to transparent. There it's showing me white to transparent but I need to change that to black. So down to my color picker, switch the colors around. So now when I click and drag, depending on where I drag from, I can create quite a lengthy gradient, or if I do a short, sharp click and drag, a very tight one. So we've got lots of scope here, and of course, we can use more than one tool at a time on the mask, so I could begin the process maybe with a gradient, but I may end up using the brush for a finishing effect. Now we do have a number of options open to us. If we go to the layer mask, right click, the first option is we can disable it. There is a keyboard shortcut for this, but this is almost as convenient. To bring it back, just click the mask, Right click and we can delete the layer mask and as you can see, it's gone and we're back to the original image. I'll hit Control Z to undo that. You'll notice that when I right click on the mask, one of them is grayed out. You'll find this happens from time to time when you're using smart objects. Apply the layer mask is the option, but of course it can't do it while it's a smart object. So if I went to the extreme right, right clicked and I rasterize the layer, removing the smart object status. Then I can right click and apply the layer mask and the effect is obvious. The mask is applied to the image and now we can see all the transparent areas, but of course we lose the ability to go back and make any changes. Once again, Control Z will bring it back. Now I think that's going to do for now. One other way to remove the layer mask is we can just drag it down over the bin in the layers palette. What I'm going to do here is I'm going to open up another image. Now once this image opens up on the screen, I've just opened this from Adobe Camera Raw, I'm going to go to the tab at the top of the screen, drag it out, and I'm going to hold my shift key because when I click drag and drop, Holding the shift key makes sure that one image sits four square on top of the other. And I can close down my original. Because what I could do here is I can apply a layer mask to this layer. Let's do that. 
Over to the left hand side I've got black selected as my foreground colour. There's the soft edge brush which I wish to use and I'm going to use a flow rate. Let's start off with 10%. Incidentally if you check this little box here you can change the flow rate by hitting the one key which will give you 10%, the two key will give you 20, all the way up to 9 for 90 and then 0 for 100. And if you did want something like 25 you just hit 25 in quick succession and there you have it. So I'm going to hit my number one key to go back to a 10% flow. Now you can see that as I start to paint on that black with a flow rate of just 10%, it's actually quite a lengthy process. In other words, it's tempting, isn't it, to push it up to something like 50%. The trouble with that is it runs away with us if we're not careful. Keep the flow rate low, and what I could do here is just allow this to blend into the background and I can decide while watching what I'm doing exactly what part of the image I want to show. Now even at this stage if I wanted to raise those people up to be higher in the frame if we look at the composition here with the crop they're not too bad as it happens probably best left where they are but the point I want to make, let me go back to my move tool, is we can select the layer and with the mask we can shunt it upwards. Now I'm going to use the arrow keys on my keyboard and there you can see I'm moving just the image that contains the mask. Now it's giving me a bit of a problem down at the bottom but I can move things anywhere on the screen that I like. I can always select the mask again go back and pick up my brush and I can continue the work that I wish to do. There's also a way which I, don't, I must admit I've not used very often but on occasions where we may want to just sever the link here. There's a little link between the image and the mask. So here I can now maybe select the image and I can move it upwards. Let me go back to my move tool to do that. I can move it upwards leaving the mask in place. So we've got quite a bit of flexibility here on how we place things and how we reveal them from the layer beneath. Now here you can see I've opened up another image straight from Adobe Camera Raw. It's a smart object but it's really irrelevant for what we're doing here. But with this mask I can do one of two things. Let me turn off that layer just for a moment because I can either drag and drop this layer onto the image above moving it from one to the other but if I hold my alt key then I'll copy it from one to another. So what I've now got is my bird nicely floating in that different sky. The mask is not entirely appropriate now though is it? So we would need to select that and I'm going to select white to just reveal a little more of the wings of the bird. But if I wanted to remove some more of that blue sky, then I'd have to switch to black. And I could start to drop the blue down a little bit if I felt it was appropriate. Now you can imagine if that image that I've got at the bottom of my layered stack, which is the sky, was perhaps a textured background of some other type. Maybe a rocky outcrop or a rusty piece of metal. We find that the creative possibilities are almost endless. Generally speaking, layer masks are the basis for most composite and montage images. And although we've not looked at text in Photoshop just yet, we have the ability to use masks there in a creative way too. I'll see you next time.